You have to give something to get something. This has been shown in studies of eunuchs. After being castrated, these men live significantly longer than non-castrated males. But that's just one bizarre connection between sex and death. Surely it's the only thing that connects these two fundamentally opposed forces. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and I know a lot about sex. And I should. I've had it with almost 10 women. For this reason, I've decided to make this installment of my Real Immortality series about the strange relationship between sex and our lifespan. There are actually a great number of links between sex and mortality. Some remain unexplained, such as why more boys are born during and after wartime. Others are rather surprising, like the fact that when spermidine, a molecule found in human semen, is given to yeast worms and fruit flies, it considerably extends their lifespan. But many of these seemingly curious ties make sense, at least from an evolutionary standpoint. The main reason we don't live forever is because evolution doesn't reward the longest lived organism. It rewards those that have the most successful offspring. Your evolutionary fitness isn't judged by how spry you are at 80, but by how many kids you have and how successful they are at having kids. Because of this, evolution sometimes selects for genes that are beneficial to our reproductive capacity in the short term, but turn out to be harmful to our health in the long term. This phenomenon is called antagonistic pleiotropy. Pleiotropy is when a gene controls for more than one trait, and the antagonistic part refers to how the expression of these two traits conflict with one another. One of the best examples of this is testosterone in men. Testosterone makes men stronger, more confident, and more fertile in their prime, but also leads to an increased risk of prostate cancer later in life. Many scientists conclude that this is why castrated men may live longer, and it may be why women on average live longer than men. Antagonistic pleiotropy also explains the persistence of some genetic diseases. For instance, the same repetitive DNA sequence that causes Huntington's disease later in a person's life also helps fight cancer. And it's not just in human beings that you find a connection between lifespan and reproductive ability. These tendencies can be seen throughout nature. If you feed a mouse the bare minimum it needs to survive, it will completely lose its sex drive. But it will also live 40% longer. And a mutation that causes infertility in yeast also causes those yeast cells to live 50% longer. What this research shows is that aging isn't inevitable. Longevity simply hasn't been prioritized. All you have to do is figure out a way to tell your DNA to stop worrying so much about your kids and to focus on your goal of effortlessly moving through the millennia and bending history to your undying will. So you can help people. Thanks for watching. Check out some of my other videos. Be sure to subscribe and come on back to see the exciting conclusion of Real Immortality. Ooh, side note. If you're going to be up at New York Comic Con, I'll be appearing at Webster Hall the Saturday of that weekend along with my good friend Kevin Marr as part of the blockbuster event Kevin Geeks Out. If I see you there, let me know what superpower you want. <laughs>